Okay, so we want to make sure that the user has only selected two items here. So if the length of our selection does not equal two, we are going to use the confirm dialog command. Spelling. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and look up the command documentation here. And we'll take a little look at how the formatting needs to happen. So we have uh, a few things. I'm just going to grab all of this stuff here. So we can see there's a lot of stuff. We don't actually need all of it. And I'll just come over here and comment it out. So we've got our title. We've got a message. We've got some buttons. We've got a default button. We have a cancel button. So. Uh, Actually, let's just do this. We'll keep that. Make sure I didn't screw up my spacing. And we can just kind of run this. So if I don't have anything selected, this test will certainly fail and we get our little pop-up here. So for confirm, I guess whatever, like we can get rid of that. I'm gonna hit no. We will say something like, actually, maybe we don't even, whatever. I mean, you can put anything you want in there. And the message can be, this is sort of where the, uh, the valuable information is. We can say, please select two objects. We'll go ahead and run the code again. So we have yes, no, obviously that doesn't really make sense. So we don't need the button. What we really don't need is two buttons. I think we can just get away with, we do need one button because otherwise it probably wouldn't work. So we'll say, okay. We don't really have a cancel button, I don't think. Let's see what this does. Cool, all right, that's all I want. So, you know, there's probably something in here that you know, these, these buttons here are, are, there's just a little bit more meat to this command than I really need, so I'm kind of just making sure that I have at least two objects selected. And so if two objects are selected, this line will not even execute, no big deal. So I'm gonna have object one, I'll call this uh, object A, and I'll set this equal to cell zero. Oops, give myself a little bit of breathing room here. And we'll have another object called object B, and we will set this one to whatever the second item in our selection is. And then to get my code, I've got my get face info. So I'm gonna say uh, info A equals get face info on object A. I had a bracket there, it needs to be a parentheses, object A. And info B will equal get face info on object B. So basically we're just taking whatever our selection is, confirming that we have two items selected, and then getting the uh, face center positions for both of those objects and storing that information in a list called info A and info B. So now what I wanna do is basically iterate over all of the faces on the mesh with more faces and do a little measurement between uh, those faces and the faces on the mesh that is missing faces. So what I'm gonna do is say something like if, whoops, the length of info A is greater than, basically I just wanna find which one, which one of these is longer because there's no way to guarantee that the user has selected them in the right order. So we just wanna say, which one of these is longer? That's the one that we're gonna be doing our, our testing for. So if the length of A is bigger than the length of B, 
then we're going to have a little for loop here that says for i in range length of a. And then over here, we need to do something basically like get uh, distances. And we'll write that code in just a moment here. And there's no reason for this to be tabbed over. I'm not sure exactly how that happened. And then we'll have another scenario down here where if the uh, list is different, we're going to start with B. So it's going to be for I in range length A. And then the way that the we're going to iterate over the next list is we'll say for J in range length B. And we'll do the same thing over here for J in range length A. So we're basically just whichever one of these objects is uh, the, these lists is bigger, that's going to have the, uh, it's going to basically correlate to the object with more faces. We are going to, for each one of those faces, do a comparison with all of the faces on the other mesh. So uh, we need to write a new little snippet of code here. We're going to make a new definition called get distance. And uh, the way this works is we'll have a couple of points. We're going to have uh, two x, y, and z coordinate points that will be referred to as a and b for the argument. And uh, we need to use a little bit of a, a variation on the Pythagorean theorem that I can never remember the actual details for, but is very easily Googled. So just one moment. So uh, typically, you can, as long as you sort of ask a question in Google, you'll, especially if it's something simple, you'll get an answer. Uh, and so I just want to show you what I've got here. I've got get distance between two points, x, y, z, Python. So with this, there you go. So probably all of these will take us to something that's going to work. Obviously, we'll try the first one here. I'm just looking for a formula. And there it is. That'll work. So we may need to make a little bit of a modification to it if it's only, yeah, so this is just, yeah, this will actually work great. So I'm not 100% sure if this, this little symbol here will actually work. I'm not sure if it is Maya friendly. I usually rewrite it, and I'll show you how. So we'll make, uh, actually, before I rewrite it, let's just see if it works. So we've got our little uh, uh, formula here. And what it does is it's taking the two x values, subtracting one from the other, and then basically raising it to the power of two and then adding it to the two y values one minus the other raised to the power of two and the two z values one minus the other raised to the power of two and then the whole thing is added together and then the square root of that total value is taken and that's your distance so we'll just go ahead and say uh, we'll return dist so here is our function we'll come down here and rather than a and b it's going to be length a i sorry uh info info a i and info b j so it's getting a little bit cody here i just kind of want to break down what's happening so we have our list info A and info B, and each one of these contains the X, the XYZ position of all the faces associated with each object that was selected. So this is a list of XYZ positions, and this is a list of XYZ positions. So we're saying whichever one of these is longer, we're going to select every single one of those. We're going to iterate over every single one of the other mesh, and we're going to get the distance. So this is going to be the uh, ith face here in uh, in our first object in the jth face or whatever. I mean, it's kind of an awkward way of saying it, but hopefully it kind of makes sense. And I'm just going to come over here and we're going to print for now the output. And because I don't have any idea which one of these is actually going to be longer than the other, I'll just go ahead and make sure that these two little pieces of code here are identical. We need a bracket there. I'm mean, sorry, a, a colon. All right. So if this little thing here works, and the code is proper. 
we should get some value stuff popping up, but uh, we might also just get an error. So let's go ahead and grab both of our objects and run the code. And sure enough, invalid syntax, no big deal. Kind of expect that, but hey, you never know. So I'm gonna go ahead and in the next video, rewrite this so that it works inside of Maya. And then uh, we'll take a look at uh, doing something with the output of our uh, little distance equation here.